Ladies and gentlemen, the power of the cloud. Much was made of the cloud processing of the Xbox One before the system was launched, but then things got really, really quiet. However, it's been unveiled that Crackdown 3, which of course is one of the big exclusives for the system, can actually utilize up to 13 times the power of an Xbox One through physics simulation and so on through the cloud. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is actually unveiled via an interview. Now, let's discuss this just for a moment. So, Crackdown 3, particularly in multiplayer, is aimed to be, well, destruction galore. So, in other words, everything basically will be destroyable. But it takes a lot of comp computational power to do that. And so, the developers of Crackdown 3 and um, Regent Games kind of had this problem where they thought to themselves, well, what are we actually going to be doing here? How are we actually going to utilize that amount of performance? It's far more than one an Xbox One can handle by itself. You might not think it, but such things such as being able to shoot through walls or have destroyable parts of walls or have glass act like glass and concrete act like concrete and so on and so forth actually takes a lot of computational power because each one of those things has different levels or well different characteristics that means different mathematics that means the game engine has to handle things differently it has to calculate things such, such as the destructive power of your weapons the weight of an object the impact a player would have if it you know touched that object if it's in motion and all of this different stuff and obviously this also means that let's say you would destroy a support pillar. How does the building react around that support pillar? So for example, if you destroy a corner of a building, does the building collapse or haven't you not destroyed enough? And basically speaking, I'm saying a lot of words, but it just means it's really, really intensive. A lot of games do have uh, destructible environments and a lot of games do have objects which you can destroy but then you'll notice silly things like for example you'll crash a car 100 miles an hour into let's say a wooden fence and it will be absolutely fine another thing you'll notice is a lot of games have what i consider to be almost breakpoints they're like predetermined bits of the level which if you notice when you shoot them even if you shoot them slightly off that breakpoint they'll break at that breakpoint if that made any sense whereas what they're doing with Crackdown 3 is they're not using what they consider to be fakery. So if you shoot a particular part of a wall, it will be damaged. If you, you know, throw a grenade at a part of a wall or in what have you, that will be destroyed according to the characteristics of that grenade and the characteristics of where it landed and all of your bits and pieces according to the environment. So what they did is they actually approached a company known as Cloud, uh, Cloud Engine or Cloudgen actually is the correct name, sorry about that. So what they are doing is they're actually utilizing Windows Azure. Now I'm sure many of you know what Windows Azure is, but I'll give you a quick overview. Effectively, this is a service Microsoft offers, um, and it can be for anyone. You can use it for your website. For example, you can host your website. You can do, say, video processing on it. You can use it for even things such as uh, content delivery networks you can use it for pretty much anything um, and basically they're just a bunch of servers which pretty much scale as you need them to so that's kind of the whole thing here it's it's scalable performance so if you need to utilize a lot of performance for cloud you know, or for your service the um, you know your instance can be scaled as you required so you can put more RAM into it or less RAM more storage less storage more processing power less processing power and so on and so forth I've covered what Azure is and how it works actually in depth I made a whole video about it so you can search for it on the channel if you are that way inclined but anyway what he did was he decided to pull up an overlay where it was demonstrating the performance of how much I guess well juice was being used for Xbox one and what happened was um, another overlay then appeared which was showing Davis being powered by the server some chunks of concrete for example pasted green others blue uh, these objects were located on different servers that were all powering the same game which obviously means that you know you're not necessarily connected to the same server not that you'll particularly know about that now when a building does fall it crushes the next building next to it this is what Jones said 
um, who is obviously the creative director and that crushes the next one and that can see the whole six times of the Xbox One's power. That can be continuing across the whole city map so you can begin to think about things such as collapsed buildings as a ramp for cars to t jump off of or places you couldn't get to before. We're doing a lot of destruction for destruction's sake but this has tremendous technology testbed which opens up a lot of new areas for multiplayer gaming and makes the games much more physical. Um, we're hitting about nine times the power of the Xbox One here in this particular demo due to the way the guys are playing but I think about 13 times is the record you can really raise the entire city if you want to. That is absolutely insane. Now obviously cloud gaming does have some problems um, and we've discussed those heavily before the Xbox One was even launched and even around the launch window. Primarily it's got down to latency so if you're processing something locally um, that is your moving data from say RAM, uh, DDR3 in the case of the Xbox One or ES RAM technically to let's say the uh, CPU. It requires a fraction of the amount of time compared to moving it across even the fastest internet connections and that's assuming you don't get problems. However, on multiplayer games it's less of a big deal because obviously with the sake of multiplayer games you don't have to worry about single player. You don't have to worry about the um, the latency involved. And of course it also means you don't have these difficult decisions of do you make the game only playable if you're online even though it's a single player which actually pisses some people off, particularly those with poorer connections or those just worried about story or what have you. And so I kind of feel that it's actually a nice option. I guess this is a good test bed to see just how much performance this actually takes and just how those with poorer connections will be able to deal with the game. So for example, let's say you're running across a kind of a flaky Wi-Fi connection or even an older, slower connection, let's say 10 MB or something really, maybe even slower than that, kind of poor. What kind of, you know, what kind of experiences do you get? Because obviously at the end of the day, cloud or any online experience isn't just a case of, well, you know what, it's going to be telling you where you are. It's got to calculate a lot of different things. And that's why, of course, people hate people with latency because it could be that you're shooting them, but if the player, if their console doesn't register the fact they're getting shot, it can be really difficult. And there is an element of prediction in here, which is kind of a problem with fighting games as well. Um, obviously, you know, that's one of the reasons, supposedly, that... Uh, that uh, Capcom are increasing the latency, or should I say, increasing the leniency of input with Street Fighter. Beforehand, you had like one frame and two frame links were kind of normal, but now they're increasing that. They're like making it three frame or four frame links is kind of the standard because of online, because they figure that, you know what, to really make this game really work and to grow online, people can't be dealing with like one frame links. And there are like techniques like plinking, which kind of essentially gets the most out of a little bug in the system but I'm kind of going off topic the point being it's kind of cool um, and I think it could be kind of interesting that's not to say that Sony don't have their own um, their own cloud services because they do I've discussed them before as well they're actually outsourcing uh, their cloud services but this is actually kind of cool in my opinion Microsoft obviously have the infrastructure for it and they're actually rated really highly uh, just for your FYI, um, I actually use uh, Azure for work, a couple of work uh, servers, and also RGT is also hosted, at least the CDN is actually hosted on um, Windows Azure as well. So I actually have some confidence in their service, it's actually pretty damn good, at least in my opinion. So it's kind of cool. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on this one. I'm not saying necessarily, ooh, the cloud, and oh my god, it's going to be the best thing since sliced bread. But it's quite nice, at least in my opinion, and I think it does have some potential. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.